<laughs> if you're under 13, piss off. Hello RC world and welcome to another episode of Angry Dave's Adult RC. I am your host Angry Dave. Today on the bench we have a G-Made Sawback. This is going to be our next build project. Yes I understand that the chassis is already built. How good of you to notice. But that part's fucking boring and I'm sure there's already a million people who have shown that. So we're going to skip that bullshit. <clears throat> we're going to go right to putting in the electronics and doing the paint job and scaling it out and then uh, we'll see what kind of cool shit we can make. All right, so there we go. Started off with the servo, got it bolted in, got the wire run up. Obviously there's nothing to plug it into just yet. Pretty easy install right on the axle. We got the uh, DS servo 3225MG metal gear. Um, I don't believe it's waterproof, but it could be waterproof. Um, I do not have the horn permanently installed. I got to fire it up and center it um, So this screw and the two cross clamp screws um, are not loctited or tightened. It's just on there This one's loctited and tightened um, and the rest of the suspension or steering uh, components there are all tight. So uh, Let me see. Um, I think the next thing we're gonna do is stick in the motor because I think that's the next easiest thing to do All right, motor's in. Uh, I gotta say, that was probably the stupidest fucking motor install I've ever been a part of. Um, if you have a G-Made Sawback, um, I highly recommend you make sure you have a motor while you're building the truck. Because if the truck's already built, it's a real fucking pain in the dick to get a fucking motor in this thing. Um, whoever designed this transmission, um, go to hell. Uh, go fuck yourself, fuck your mother, fuck as many people as I can list, fuck you. Um, it's just fucking stupid in every fucking way. Um, you got this stupid aluminum plate in the back here that the motor bolts to. Um, there's not really like a spur cover. It's just this, it's that side of the case. So you can't just take the fucking transmission apart every time you want to do a motor. Uh, and then if you take the transmission off, um, the four nuts, yeah, that's right, fucking nuts, that the screws go into from the bottom uh, fall out. And then once the motor's in, the one that goes right under here is fucking impossible to get to. Um, so, yeah, have fun with all this bullshit. It's not, uh, not going to be a good time. <laughs> it really is not. Um, I would highly recommend having the motor while you're building the truck. Um, take this fucking plate off and screw the motor to it and then screw it back to the transmission um, and set the gear mesh and all that shit before you actually put it into the skid plate of the truck um, or at least before you put the skid plate into the chassis I forget what order it is in the uh, directions but yeah beware that motor is a real cocksucker to put in if you don't do it just right <clears throat> so um, I guess next thing we're going to do is move on to the uh, hobby wing and as usual, no problems putting in the hobby wing. Nothing really to it. Put the fucking double-sided adhesive shit on it. Stick it where you want it. <clears throat> and then solder on the motor leads, uh, which I'll do right now. All right, the first thing I'm going to do before I solder this thing together is uh, tin the two surfaces that I want to join. Um, if you look closely at the wires here, um, I don't know if that will focus well on it, but you can kind of tell there's already some solder melted on that that's tinning. Put a little bit on this, put a little bit on the terminal ahead of time. That way you know the solder is going to stick. Then all you got to do is heat it up just enough to melt it. And when it melts together, you're good to go. You get a nice solid joint. So let me uh, get things heated up and we'll get on that process. But uh, for now, this wire is way too long. So I'm going to have to cut it down and retin it. All right, so I got my wire shortened. So going to put a little bit of flux on the wire. Doesn't take a lot. Put a little flux on the tab on the motor. Then put 
put some solder and solder can't fucking talk on the tip of the iron and then transfer it to the wire quick get it solidified you can actually see it suck up into the wire now I'm not going to do it quite the same way on the tab I'm just going to heat it from behind and hit the front with some solder and it should melt to the tab and stick if I can not knock over the fucking camera Alright, now I should be able to just heat it up from the back, touch that wire on there and get it to stick. the process for the other one here real quick. Oh yeah, that one's already tinned. Never mind. I didn't have to shorten that one. Fucker. Hmm. Can't sit still here. I'm gonna have to attack this a little differently. Let's get a little more solder into this wire. side see if I have any better luck oh, this fucking wires hot it's hard to hold I think that one worked. Oh yeah, winner. Alright, well, off camera I'm going to go ahead and change the uh, battery connector and then uh, we'll check out what we're going to do next. There it is. Nice tidy uh, installation there. Nice tidy wires. Ready to fucking rock and roll. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is take my radio link R6FG six channel receiver uh, I'm gonna take uh, some little picks and tiny screwdrivers and things and pop open the case go spray the circuit board with oh, tech spray turbo coat acrylic conformal coating ultra fast cure contains OptiScan whatever the fuck that means um, all I care about is it makes the circuit board waterproof um, shit only takes like five or ten minutes to dry pop it back in the case and uh, get some double-sided sticky shit and stick it in there and then we can start plugging shit into it
Okay, so I got my radio on and I got the truck programmed in for vehicle three. You can see it says saw back there. Um, so now I should be able to get this bound. Let's see. I should be able to just plug in a battery to power the receiver and then hit the bind button for a second and that should do it. <coughs> Got a slow blink. Reach in here with a pick and hit the bind button. When you get the fast blink, you let go. It'll blink fast and then go solid, and that should be bound. I'm going to shut it down, plug in the servo and the speed control, and then put a proper battery to the speed control, and we should be able to fire this truck up and use it. And there we go. We got a fully functional rig. Nice. So uh, all I got to do really now is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, close up the electronics box which is just a couple of screws and in the meantime um, if you see the battery tray or uh, yeah the big fucking hole where there's supposed to be a battery tray um, I think they're uh, banking on you using one size battery and one size only and that's not gonna happen so I bent up this uh, little piece out of sheet metal and that should fit in there relatively snug so all I gotta do is drill a couple of holes to mount it and uh, get a couple of uh, battery straps on there and uh, that should do a whole lot better job than what was there before so uh, let me get that taken care of and uh, might be time to turn our attention towards the body um, I have some shit on order that's not here for it yet uh, the paint's not here. Uh, there's some other scale shit that's not here yet. So what we're going to do for now is uh, cut the holes for the body mounts. And there's seats and some other shit that go on here. Uh, we'll drill all the holes for that. We'll trim the body properly and get the thing fitting on the truck. And uh, that'll be it till we get some more shit for it. So uh, let's get on that. So I busted open the directions here and it looks like... Uh, not only does it show you the locations of the holes, which are pretty well marked on the body, so they don't really have to do that, but they tell you what size each hole is. So I need to bust out a 3, 4, 5.5, and 6.5 millimeter drill bit, um, and then I can knock these out relatively quickly. And uh, if the drill bits leave ugly holes, I can always clean them up a little bit with the Lexan reamer. So there's a 3 mil hole. There's two more. There's two more. There's two more. There's the last two. Now it's time to drill 4 millimeter holes. Well, as it turns out, there's only one 4 millimeter hole. That guy right there. So that was an easy step. On to the 5.5 millimeter holes. The 5.5 millimeter holes are the shifter, the rear view mirror, and the left and right holes for the windshield. Now on to the six and a half millimeter holes, which are the actual body mounts. And the only holes we are not going to drill right now are the holes for the roll cage because it is still somewhere between England and here. So I'm not punching any holes until I have the thing in hand. Now that the six and a half millimeter body post holes are drilled uh, it's time to set it on the chassis and see how it sits see where I want to leave it for height and uh, I still have to actually do the fine trimming of the body I just kind of hacked the flange off it so that I could get it to sit on the chassis so let's get the chassis back on the bench and uh, see what we got to cut so now it fits on the chassis another step in the right direction I popped the window in there just to see how that was gonna fit that was actually pretty easy to pop in there no problem 
um, so it clears everything even before it's trimmed um, looks like we should be good with tire clearance and shit like that um, up in the front where it goes around the frame um, if you haven't done Lexan body trimming before uh, to get a little notch cut out like that the easiest way to do it is you start with your corners with a Lexan reamer and you drill two holes so you have nice round corners you don't want sharp edges because that's where cracks start then you cut from the bottom straight up to the outside edges of your holes with the Lexan shears and then you go across the top of the holes with a uh, razor blade or exacto knife or whatever and then you just bend and snap that fucking tab out of there you might have to dress it up with a file a little bit just to make sure it's ultra clean but it won't take much and you'll have a nice uh, nice uniform notch um, so that's what I did there now uh, the only thing really left to do is to go ahead and actually trim the body down to the lines and uh, I'm going to throw the seats in here and make sure the holes line up with uh, where the screws go and shit like that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll uh, make adjustments if I have to. And then uh, what do I got to do after that? Um, well, I think what I'm going to do is before I actually trim the outside of the edge of the body, um, I'm going to go online. This, the way the lines are in this body are the way they are so that it is not exactly like a licensed Jeep you know so they don't have to license the body um, so I'm gonna go and look at some early 40s MB Jeeps online and see which ones I like the best um, that kind of match the the overall style of this truck and then I'm probably gonna alter the cut line in through here uh, to make it look a little bit more like an actual Jeep um, I know it's not gonna be dead on perfect but you know whatever I don't give a fuck and there we go so uh, the lines that I chose to go with um, I found a bunch of pictures of later 40s CJ2As um, they had these big buggy headlights um, and it still had the same body overall as the MB still had the real flat fenders like the MB um, so I cut it real similar to that again like I said it's not uh, exactly the same as a, a real Jeep but it's pretty close um, it'll pull off the look it'll be just fine and then uh, we got the mirror on we got the, the window was already on put in the shifter put in the seats everything fit fucking fantastic so the uh, the marks they give you for the holes to drill are uh, right where they're supposed to be and the sizes are right on so that's fucking awesome so now that it's all good all we need is for the paint to show up uh, driver to show up I got a couple of scale details that I'm still waiting on so if you like that build, um, go ahead and hit the like button, um, subscribe so you can keep up and uh, see what we do with the paint, leave us a comment, share the video, check us out on our social media pages and website, and we'll see you next time on Adult RC, where grown-up time is playtime.